Hi everyone, it's Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. I'm here to announce, super, super excited that we're doing another junk journal round robin. So the last one that we did was in April and this one is going to be for November. And I'm hosting this along with my friends, Mary Ellen at Red Parrot and Shell from Shell's Creative Chaos, who I will link both of them down below in the description box. So how does this whole thing work? If you missed April and you want to go back and watch it. I'm actually today after this video, probably once I get it done, I'm going to create a playlist of the videos for the first Junk Journal Round Robin. Um, and I'll just probably throw all of them into that playlist. And so what it is, is it's a swap with two other people. So you need two partners. Then you're going to make up a package of 30 little packages of something to make ephemera with for them. So you're making 60 packets in total, 30 for each person, and you're going to number them the days of the month from November 1st to November 30th. It's sort of like an advent calendar. Um, so basically we are starting, I'm, I'm announcing this today because what we're recommending are these um, important preparation days, okay? So we'll go through this card together so you understand what this whole challenge is about or this collaboration. Um, so October 1st, which as I film this is tomorrow, find two partners and start making your packages. So I recommend if you have a couple of other YouTube friends, definitely like go ahead and um, reach out to them and, you know, plan to, you know, work with them on this. We would love to have more of you, you know, making with us. And by October 15th, you should ship your package. Um, potentially a little earlier if you're doing a overseas kind of thing. What I recommend is if you're still looking for partners and you really want to take part, you can actually begin putting your packages together because it doesn't need to be tailored to the person in any way. So that's actually kind of part of the challenge because what you're doing is you're you're going to be giving somebody something and saying here now make something with it right so they've got to use their creativity um so beginning now start working on finding two swap partners if you would like to over on patreon um i i've done a post um where my patreons can choose to work together to to partner up together and then for here down below in the youtube comments if you want to just simply make a little post to say i'm looking for a partner maybe talk about like a couple things so one what country are you in and what country are you willing to ship to um and also will you be doing social media or are you just crafting at home but not not doing pictures on Instagram not doing any filming like just let us know um, you know potentially if you have a youtuber they might want to work with another youtuber as like a channel cross promotion but you know it may just be like let's just have fun and make things I think I'd be cool with either of those to be honest um, so then you're going to create your advent of 30 days for each partner. I've referred to it as an advent because I think that's what kind of aligns people's brains with what I'm looking to create here. So it's a total of 60 little packages of scraps, stickers, bits to be used in ephemera making. Um, and then add the dates November 1st to 30th on your simple packets. So I have decided today to show you what an example looks like. I'm going to actually do the whole thing myself today to just show it to you. So I'm going to pretend I just receive two lovely big envelopes in the mail full of 30 of these little things. This is my day one example from my first partner who has just wrapped this in an old book page from a book that they weren't using. And then the other one has done the same. Um, ironic, right, when you partner with two other um, false versions of yourself. So this is my other example. So these are my two packages that are going to get me ready for day one. They both say day one on them. Um, you can make these as plain or as fancy as you like. You can use plastic bags, maybe not clear though, because, you know, people could see what's inside there. Um, there's a fun element of surprise. You could use paper bags. You could just wrap them like this, wrap them in wrapping paper, just hide them in some way and number them. So then next you're going to send your packages off, exchange your addresses, do all of that, and then receive your packages from your partners. So then every day from November 1st to November 30th, you are going to open these two packets and you're going to use the items in both of these to make a piece or a few pieces of ephemera. So the challenge is really using the things you're getting and also trying to use them together. Try to use all of them if you can. Um, that would be awesome. And then 
then when you share on social media, YouTube or Instagram or TikTok, wherever you want to post, I've just said Instagram and YouTube because I think that's most common to the majority of us, but there's a whole social media world out there and you can share wherever you like. Um, JJ round robin is the hashtag. So that will kind of, you know, connect you to everybody else who might be doing this. So for, for the whole month of November, you will see at minimum three videos, one from me, one from um, Red Parrot and one from Shell's Creative Chaos. So we I'll probably be posting mine sort of first thing in the morning. <clears throat> um, but you can post at any time of day, it doesn't matter. Um, it's very loose, right? It's a casual fun kind of thing to do in November when it gets a little chillier. So again, um, all of the info will be in the description box for this. And this is your card, which I've posted to my Patreon for everyone. It's free. Um, and I will link that post. And also it's on my Instagram. If you follow me on Instagram, I'm Studio Lou over there as well. And let's get into kind of our mock-up for this challenge. So let me put my card away here. So let's see what I have in these packages. I put these together very loosely, just quickly this morning, um, without any thought of what I would be making, but they're examples of what you can send. So here is example one. It's a book page. I've just stapled the top and bottom together. And then inside, you know, oh, the other thing is the packaging. So last, last time we did this in April, the packaging became a very important and interesting um, material to add to the pieces that, that we were making. Um, but that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. In fact, I think there's kind of two interesting parallels to that. So last time, I think I ended up using my scraps, which created a lot of interesting packaging. Like I might have a jelly print page and I would wrap it in that or whatever. Um, but this time around, I feel like I didn't send such useful packaging. I used some like book pages from old children's books. Some of them would probably be a little inappropriate to make things from because they're like old kind of like, you know, history that's not told in the same way anymore kind of thing. Um, but I, I didn't even realize until I had them all packed up and I was like, oh, so it's fine. Um, so yeah, don't stress too much about packaging. But if you want to make it an element and you're doing a jelly print session or something, by all means. So package one, let's see what we have. So I have this is actually a coaster. It's got frogs on one side and an owl on the other side. Then we have a little white doily. This is a botanical, a scrap from a botanical book. A little scrap of um, green dotted scrap of paper. And then this is um, an envelope that I dyed green with coffee and green dye some time ago. So that is a very green package. Um, and then over here, inside this little book page with day one, I again just use staples to be quick about it here and we open this up and this is a smaller one now this is showing you you can send a lot of stuff one thing little stuff doesn't necessarily even have to be paper it can be things like beads fabric um you know paper clips um maybe you're going to send something to use as the base like a tag like a blank tag um it's completely up to you so this is just a scrap of um a green folder that I sprayed with mica spray, a little cutout of some leaves, and a little label that I made that says tall pine trees waving majestically. So you can also use little kind of finished objects that you've made for your own making, right? Um, whatever you want. So now we have these two things assembled together. Um, so I think like because the envelope is like the biggest thing, <clears throat> it's going to shape what I want to do for this piece. So I'm gonna start by just opening up the envelope. Let me just try to slide a ruler down here and see if I couldn't get this to open all the way. And I encourage you to, you know, you can either, like you could literally just make a fancy collaged envelope, you know, or you can do what I'm doing, which is a little chaotic, but you know, we're gonna see what we can do to make this envelope something different. And that I think is how you can kind of push your own creativity. And, you know, definitely if you're interested in doing this and you're starting your planning, but you feel like you need a little bit of um, an idea of like what, what this is gonna be, go back and take a look um, at the junk journal round robin playlist that I'm gonna create or that JJ round robin hashtag, and you'll see all sorts of things. Um, 
that will inspire you. Okay, so we have this open envelope now. And so what I'm thinking is about how to turn this into something cool that I can use as like flips and flops or something. So um, this is my one side that's a little bit wonky. I'll keep that in mind. This might be good as like a background, but I would like to ink it up, I think. And then obviously this, I like both sides of it, which kind of makes me feel like I don't want to cover it entirely. Yeah, okay. Let's get started here. So I think I'm going to come up here and just maybe, I want to pull that off the two flaps. Bring it down to there and then this too. Mostly I'm just doing this because it's kind of torn up a bit, right? Okay, there we go. And the other thing about this is you can absolutely pull from your own uh, supplies and scraps when you're making. You don't only have to use the things you were sent. You, you can freewheel as much as you like. Okay, so we have two built-in flaps here that I think I would like to turn into two different things. And then this will be something different. And then this. And the whole thing I think would translate into a very cool pocket or possibly a flip this way. Maybe a folio. Maybe I'll make a folio. That would be really fun. Yeah, I like that as a as a concept. So we have a bit of space to work with here, right? If I wanted to attach that there and have it be like a tab for a folio. Would that take too much of the space if I went to here? It would just kind of cut into his head. Um, the other thing is this coaster is quite thick. So I'm wondering if I can't take the plies apart um, to make two pieces here. Now this is risky because you run the risk of, you know, ruining everything. <laughs> and I do like to fly close to the sun. So let's try. I'm getting too thin there. Let's go to the other side. Try to meet in the middle. Actually, I wonder if I can't use my knife. That might be smarter. We'll see. It might be smarter. It might not be. I have to hold this a little close to myself for a second. Hold on. It's either that or I may not have all my fingers by the end of this. We'll, we'll see. I don't like to use blades really for this kind of thing just because it can get a little easier to quickly rip something. What I really need though is to just get into the even, into an even area where the plies are of equal thickness. That's what I really need to do. Let's just try to do that. We did it. Okay. No blade required. No fingers needed to get lost. We're good. So now we have these two images and that is perfect. So I'm thinking like a fun naturey kind of folio that I want to make here and I want to utilize all the flaps for something. So I've got this bit here and then this piece of scrapbook paper. So I think because this like these are both a little gnarly, I might attach them like that. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm gonna grab my art glitter glue here. Just glue this flap down onto this piece of scrapbook paper. And then I'm going to cut from the corner of that right down straight. Okay, so now we have the option to make this a pocket or 
a tip down with something else going on here. So let's just leave that as an open option right now. Now, the next thing I should probably do is just clean up these, get that off, get rid of any excess sort of like plies of this coaster that I don't need. This one's nice and thin already. This one, I think it's fine. Okay, so let's back both of these. Glue stick. And these are already, I would say, thick enough um, to be a decent journal card, so I don't gotta go majorly thick on the paper. So I'm just gonna use some old craft book paper here from a book that I recently tore apart. One. And two. All right, that's good. And I just gotta put a little glue because I started to peel that ply there. So I think before anything else, I'm probably gonna stitch around both of those. Um, but first, oops, my alarm has to go off, of course. Um, I wanna do something with this, with a bit of color. And I'm just trying to decide what color I wanna use here. Do we wanna stay with the green or do we want to do something a little darker. Maybe I'll go a little a little of both. Let's go a little of both, okay? We'll start in the center here with a bit of the green. Okay. And then I will come in with some um, scorched timber around the edge. Then I'm going to just grab my, I'll grab a couple book pages just to lay them down right here. Pop that on top and I just wanna spray it with a little bit of coffee. Mm -hmm. This is just um, coffee that I brewed in my coffee pot um, and I've added rubbing alcohol to it just about like um i don't know like if this whole thing is full probably the top i would put rubbing alcohol just uh it doesn't have to be exact it's just going to keep everything from getting any mold right just in case so now we've got the coffee here let it do its thing for a moment and then i'm just going to blot with another set of book pages to just get the heavier you know wet coffee off before i dry it could also choose to spray your piece right now if you want to um, but I'm not going to so I already really like the change that this is creating I also like how the book page looks behind it and I'm thinking I might keep this whole thing together um, and stitch it instead of uh, pulling it up once it's dry I might actually just stitch right around here because this has created a really unexpectedly fun background it gives it a bit of a grungy feel And while I'm here, I'm just sort of like looking at this and thinking it could probably do with some coffee too, but I don't know what I'm gonna do with that yet. So let's just wait and see. All right, so that's dry. Now let's just pick it up for a sec here and see, do I in fact want to stitch it or glue it maybe 
probably glue it onto this book page. And because I've lifted it, like I can choose where and what book page to use. I've got this book here um, that might be nicer actually, because it's about nature and it's got bigger um, text. So I'm gonna use this page actually. Then on the back of the doily, I think I might, let's think about what do we want to do with this doily first? Okay, pocket tab. Originally I had said I might use this as a background, right? So before I get ahead of myself, do I still want to use it as a background? Um, Nope, I want to do something different and I, I know what it is. So let's go ahead and we'll use this. Um, okay, so part of the fun of this collaboration and the challenge itself is like you're kind of thinking on your feet, right? What am I doing? What am I making? You don't have a lot of prep because um, you're just opening a package a day. And obviously, you know, if you get everything together earlier, you can start a little earlier. I'm going to switch pages because, you know, you can, what I mean by start earlier is, you know, you can pre-plan if you're doing videos, you can film a little ahead and then set your videos to play from the 1st of November onward. I think many of us who participate in these kind of collabs, we end up having to do that because, you know, you don't want anything to go wrong. I think last year with my, or sorry, not last year, this year in April. Um, so used to so many of these things being annual, but we're doing this twice a year because it's, it's actually very relaxing and chill. It's not high stress, high pressure, like some collaborations can be. Um, yeah, it's just a very relaxed one. So, I had one um, snag last time in April where my video got eaten or something. Every now and then that happens to, to most of us YouTubers. We go through that at some point. Um, and so the fun thing was is that I had some things because I live in pretty close proximity to Mary Ellen and um, Shell was so kind to send like a an inspiration envelope um you know if, if what you know if you felt like you needed more inspiration on a certain day so i had extra things from both of them and i was able to just make another video and then show the ephemera that i made in the wrecked video and then make a new video with the stuff i had from them so that's also something to think about if you also want to do you know an additional swap of anything else with your partners like maybe you know you just want to send them a, a happy mail too or whatever not necessary but totally possible and totally up to you um just something to think about so i'll set my book back over here and now i think this i may end up using here um but i have to trim it down ever so slightly i think i i might not have to but we'll see because if this goes in and this goes in and then we can attach this on top with the way that I'm planning to make it, it might actually be just fine. Yeah, okay. So what I'm gonna do is work on this now. Um, I want to grab my glue book and I need packaging paper for some of this. That one I'll use for something else. Um, or even folder would be awesome. Okay, so I just need to thicken this up just a little bit and you'll see why here. Okay, we'll glue this down. Which side do I want? Probably this side. Okay. Okay. 
So this video is good because it's also going to kind of show you what to expect of our videos. Um, I, I imagine most of these videos will be around 30 minutes, possibly up to an hour, sometimes more. You never know what's going to happen. And then sometimes I've even had where whatever was sent to me just so perfectly called me to like almost leave it alone um, or do something very simple with it that like it was maybe a 10 to 15 minute video. So you never really know. Okay, so I need to do a couple stitching things. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go stitch around this and I'm going to stitch around these and I'll be right back. Alrighty, I'm back. So we stitched around this and what I'd like to do now maybe is try to rough up this edge that I, you know, glued down a little. I'm going to pull it back up and this is just purely for looks. <laughs> it's not functional, just fun. along now if it wants to cooperate we'll see because I kind of want to maybe just rough it up a little hmm it's such a tiny little edge it's hard to really rough up a bit maybe we just kind of crinkle pull it up crinkle 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 and that'll just kind of like train the paper up and away a little bit from the, the folder. You can just bend the folder back too if the paper won't lift. Just kind of do that. There we go. That's a little more like rough and gruff. Um, so let's just set it here and just hit it with ink again. And that will highlight that it's, you know, kind of more organic. All right. So that's that. Now... Let's cut these apart and then we'll get rid of all that excess paper. These coasters were a really fun little thrift find that I recently made. It was a game I think called Caption This. And so it's like a bunch of um, double-sided coasters and it's a game and like you're supposed to caption the game. And this picture here reminds me so much. It's so funny. I saw this like TikTok this week <laughs> and it, or no, it was an Instagram reel um, from like a frog because I'm, you know, I follow all these frog things and toad things on Instagram because it's me. And um, <clears throat> this guy was stacking frogs <laughs> like outside like he was just like he put like there's one frog there and then he puts another one on top and he picks up another he puts it on top and he gets to four and you just hear him go no way and he tries to put like a fifth one on top and then like two of them fall off and then they all kind of go and on their separate journeys and I was like I totally I totally get it I want to do that too <laughs> Okay, so this is going to be our top piece. So what I want to do here, I think, is create maybe a pocket um, like so. And we'll let that hang over just a little bit and that, that's fine. Um, so let me just get rid of these strings because they're going to get in the way. So this is where we're starting to put together this piece, right? So let's go ahead and take the the next step into what we're doing here. And I think you'll find like what I found doing this challenge the first time is like it took me on a little adventure, you know, every day because I didn't really know exactly what I was doing. So you just have to look at things sort of critically and make decisions and not stress about what you're making. And you know, if you wanna make a journal to put it all in, I totally recommend that too. Um, I believe Mary Ellen did that um, the first time around. And um, I think that's very typical of a lot of challenges like, you know, um, the people do. I'm actually gonna close this side of the pocket too. Now, what I have here is this, and I kind of want to do something with it. So I'm thinking about where did that green piece go that I had right here? I might use this piece of tab right here to create a more even looking thing. So 
So I can have two pieces of that. Okay. Just to make it look neater over here. And we'll flip this over again. And also give this like a nice um, kind of a handle, you know, for opening and closing this piece. So this is a pocket, okay? Now, um, on the inside of here, I wanted to, to take this packaging paper. glue this down Go a little glue stick in the middle to just make sure it's all gonna be glued start up here centered okay Now this, I want my frog on the outside, um, but I don't want it to be a pocket. I just want it to be like a little, um, like a little opening sort of. So I'm thinking, do I want to glue it or do I want to stitch it um, like so? I'm going to glue it. And I want it to be here at the top. I want it to kind of hide that there's the owl under there. And then we have to look at the back now and see how do we make that a nice transition. Um, and what I think I'd like to do possibly is create a pocket there. Would it go all the way across or would it go just on that? Could be either really, if we think, because if I put it here like that, if it was a pocket, yeah, maybe I'll do that. Okay, so we need to obviously even this piece out because it's all wonky. Get rid of this little, I'll keep that little scrap in case I want to use it for something. I found for whatever reason, when I, <laughs> when I did this before, I became like very much like, let's use every last little piece. You don't have to be that way. It's just uh, <laughs> something I started to do for no real reason. Um, I'm gonna glue this down, just cause this is kind of older paper, just on a piece of folder to um, make sure that it stays put. Or actually, you know what, I won't use folder. I don't want to make it super thick. I'm just going to use um, book page. I use this book page. Let's use the bottom here. Because it's a nice thick book page. Okay, so now we can cut this piece out and then we'll trim it down to size for the pocket that I want. So we can go right from the fold to here and um, I'm going to cut off, I think, the white space. I'll keep the, the interesting colored space. OK. 
Okay. Over there, so it's a little titch smaller. Then I will round the corners on the bottom just to kind of go along with the the shaping that I have on the coaster. Then I'm going to just ink up the edges of this before we glue it. Fun pocket. Okay. This, this, and then I need to decide what I'm doing with this. So, one thing I wanted to do was decide if I want to put this up here. This is going to attach on here. I know that much. But not exactly like that. I'm going to have to do something a little different. I might even put a fold there like that. That might be nice actually. We'll see. We'll see. I'm not there yet. Um, okay. So that could go here. Yeah. Let's do that. I'm going to ink the white space here with the same dark scorch timber ink. stitch this bottom pocket and also I might stitch around this too because I kind of like how that might look. This one I don't know maybe I will stitch around it too and then I need to decide what I'm doing with these upper and lower flaps and then this. So first I think with this it needs ink to get rid of most of the white because the white is going to stand out way too much on this um, surface, I think. And I also need to grunge up that green because it's too, too green. Just got to grunge this a little. Okay, that's better. Now. Does this need a focal point maybe or something like that? Hmm. I'm gonna dig into my scraps a little here. look at some of my naturey scraps that I've got cut out in this bag um, and again this is allowed you're allowed to go into your stuff because you want to make something fun a green butterfly could be kind of cool on this and then we can do more of the paper there actually yeah that might work you know why I'm thinking about that other flap I want to do um, yep, I think I, uh, that will do it. That one's also nice, but I think, actually, I like that one more than this one. Yeah. That was cut out of a nature book. The others, the other bluey green one, those are actually from the Dollar Tree. They sometimes have some really nice, like, cutouts at the Dollar Tree. Every now and then I do find things like that. So let's just get rid of all these guys, all these butterflies. My butterfly and bug kind of cut out stash. <laughs> but see, this is why you make stuff like this, this kind of fodder, because it comes in very handy when you're working on things. So the first thing we need to do is thicken up 
Oops, we have an extra butterfly. That's okay. Thicken up this. Have any more folders hanging around here? Yeah, I do. About 10 billion of them. Um, there we go. that white up but I'm also going to make a bit of a um, effort to cut it out a little closer than I did in the original fussy cutting of that butterfly. Okay. It's very quiet today. I'm going to just trim a little of the tail of that wing down a bit. Just a little. Because I don't like having super delicate parts. All right, so then this side we need some more packaging paper. Is that big enough? Mm, maybe. Yeah, I think so. For what we're doing, yes. I shouldn't be using this as my, <laughs> this is my glue book. <laughs> the other one I'm using for words, I've got to start cutting it up. Words and a few pictures that are really nice in that book. Okay, so that's good. And this side, We need to ink. Okay. I also think I want to ink the edges in general on this piece. generally running around all the edges here. Okay. Then mm. in one of these pages, yeah. find something that doesn't have anything like disturbing on it. There's like a bit of a discussion on there about like one e animal kind of eating another animal and <laughs> I don't want that. But I do want like a piece of this on here I think too. Just to give some 
texture. Now, all your pieces don't need to be this um, elaborate. I think I'm just taking a little time, a little extra time than I normally would with this because I haven't had a whole lot of like kind of making time recently and I'm missing it a lot. <laughs> A whole lot okay so I am going to go to the sewing machine now because I want to do some stitching I'm gonna stitch the pocket around here I think maybe around there um, and probably also around here I just want to stitch things and then also maybe before I go though I should decide how this is gonna work so we know this is gonna go like this okay then this I want to be like coming down from here um, but I need to decide like I think I'm going to just cut the top edge off like you know here and then I will possibly even use this excess piece for something else but I need a straight edge at the top okay yeah, that's going to serve my purpose much more so that will get done we can probably glue this on here now just get it on and then probably go over it again with stitching Then we need to look at the back obviously here right so this is actually where i could even create this as a pocket to cover that flap and we could stick a little something in there so let's maybe just do that too while we are here All right, I will be back after I stitch and then I'll sort of show you everything I stitch. Okay, so let's trim some threads here. We are all stitched. So I did stitch on this pocket and on this side, I didn't stitch anything. This back, I stitched around here. The bottom flap, I stitched around there. Now I should probably note, I've got black thread in my sewing machine and yellow in my bobbin. Um, so obviously think about how you want everything to look when you choose your thread colors. I usually don't think too hard about it to be completely honest. Um, just because I don't, <laughs> but that's okay. Okay. There we go. Now there's a few things I need to take care of. So this, let's put it on here. That's where we want that to be. I think. Maybe like right here. I only want a tiny bit kind of coming up off of there. other things so I have this I still need to use I have this scrap left over that I want to use to take care of this bit of stitching here um, so like I knew that was gonna happen right I would have that stitching there but like I still wanted to stitch it needed stitching There's 
that. And then I wonder if I have on here um, anything fun. Marvelous creature. Let's go with that. So then we have, um, okay, so we have this pocket up here, uh, pocket here. This is a tip down, right? Writing space, writing space, writing space. Um, and then over here we have this pocket. So we have lots going on. And I think where I want to put this might be on like this space because it's kind of the only space that's like truly blank, right? Other than down here, maybe I'm, oh, I like it there better. Oh yeah, I like that much more. Okay, so let's glue that on. And now we've like officially used up all the things that were part of the packages, right? So that's good. And then again, you know, you could come in with something like this to um, add something a little extra. Like this is just the scraps that I have left over from when I was looking for a butterfly. So I'm gonna just go ahead and use that up there because it looks really nice. A little dragonfly. And I'm planning to be doing some horticultural type journals. So this piece for sure will already get used um, in whatever I'm gonna make there. Um, so yeah, we've got our piece. So this is like a flippy, floppy folio kind of thing. You know, you can literally use it as a folio in the journal. So um, totally up to you how, you how you use it. You know, you could definitely do that. The one actually before I I don't want to lie to you. So the one problem that I see is because this is going over this edge that would impact it as a folio. So you know what I'm going to do? Um, I'm going to cut it right off. Yeah, just like that. And the stitches, they, they're exactly where I need them to be. So now this does work like a folio because it's not going to like stick out of this, you see? So you'll be able to stab your holes. Oh, and then I wanted to do one more thing. Um, I like to do this sort of technique where you make something feel more bookish, okay? And it's really good if you've got any kind of a fold like that you you would normally you would put washi tape on, um, but like you don't want to use washi tape. You want to use something a little, you know, different. So I like to use a bit of book page on any folds like this where the fold has gotten weakened or um, you want to just decorate with a bit of book page. So that's what I'm going to do. I noticed that there was a little bit of weakening in that one fold up there. So, um, yeah, just do this and this. And then you just kind of carry it around in different places to like add continuity and also just like interest, right? Like this up here, we could do a bit of interest up there. And you'll see it's going to make it look really neat. Okay. And you can kind of mold and fold and bend your paper into these kind of shapes because this is rounded. I'm going to create a little fold there and press it down. Then tear more of this little old book page here. Glue it. And you know, keeping in mind, like all this can be used as writing space. So don't completely cover all the spots that you want for writing space, but like something like this is not all that impactful, right? Actually, no, not in, it has to go in the pocket. <laughs> I forgot that was a pocket. There we go. Oops, let's glue again. There we go. I just slid it around too much there. And come in here. 
One more. This fold is totally fine. Um, maybe down here. Okay, so see how that just made it look a lot more interesting? All in all, it's like there's more interest there. Okay, so then how does this fold? This way, no, this way, then this way, then this way, then that way. And then you can kind of decide, do I want to do anything else? You know, I think a focal point here would be really good, like, you know, something like that, but I don't want to use that one. Um, but yeah, that is essentially what I'm planning for this piece. And obviously, if I want to do more of this book page kind of thing, I'm, I'm going to do one more. I just like the shape of this. It's funny, when you play with books all the time, you'll find, like, you get drawn to the strangest things. And for me, like, I just get drawn to these kind of shapes and placements of paper. Yep. Okay, so that is our little folio. Loads of writing space, loads of pockets and flips and flops and things. It kind of explodes out. It's a nice way to like make an envelope do more than be an envelope, right? So that being said, thank you so much for hanging out with me here for this, uh, you know, introductory um, junk journal round robin. Um, definitely check out my friends Mary Ellen and Shell. I will link their channels and then you will be all ready to go. So as of now, feel free to start reaching out and finding partners. Um, let me know if you're going to participate. Just leave me a comment. I would love, love to see you participate. So um, outside of that, also if you participate and you're on social media, definitely let me know because I want to link below um, all of my videos to let people know that, you know, there are other participants to check out. Out, and I will link you and um, have a nice list there and hopefully we can all you know collaborate together and kind of grow and merge toward each other's audiences because that makes YouTube the most fun is when we're all like part of a big club right <laughs> so that being said have a wonderful day and I will talk to you soon I'll be back very soon with more on junk journal round robin probably some reminders about getting partners and that sort of thing so until next time have a great day bye for now